Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Stationers. Now, our latest update to the game on New Year's has just brought some huge changes to the pressures and temperatures used for making our alloys and super alloys. So today we're going to be having a bit of bit, bit of a smelting day, and we shall make some alloys. So for our alloy make today we're going to be using the furnace I have built in previous episodes if you want to go through the build build for our advanced furnace here go back and have a look at the videos for start with the ba building a basic furnace to learn of the fuel systems and the instrumentation set up and then have a look at our building a better furnace and finishing the better furnace to get the pressure regulation now the pressures have gone up hugely some of the some of the alloys, the super alloys, require 50 megapascals of pressure to actually get it going. Now that's a tall ask there. It would have blown your old furnace apart, but along with the requirements being upgraded, our furnace has been upgraded as well. It can handle 50 megapascals. It's been upgraded to 100 megapascals. But just be warned, all the associated pipes and tanks and other things there have not been upgraded. They will still explode at 50 50 megapascals. So make sure that we are only inflating our, our furnace to that one and we're not just letting it pass off into other things. Right, health and safety done. Our furnace itself is unchanged. Our changes we've made are on the radiator system. I have enlarged the radiator system quite considerably and I have placed a couple of surge tanks up there. So now if that overflow tank just does overpressure. I can quickly dump it into here. I have plenty of space. So looking at the code, this is of course available on the workshop should you want to download any of the changes I've made. I have changed, because we have to go to much higher pressure now, I've changed the multiplier on the pressure dial. It was 100, the same as the temperature. I've changed it to 500. So now we can wind it up to 50 megapascals. Enough of the technical babble. Let's get down to what you really came here to see. F1 We've got ingots in there. It's got all our recipes in here. So if we want steel, it's telling us that we've got a 3 to 1 ratio of iron and carbon. We need to get 900k, which is a bit more than what it used to be. It must be between 1 megapascal and 100. So that's a huge range there to get it from, between 900 and 100,000. So we've got a huge range to play for. This one is pretty easy to make. Right, yeah. So we're all going. We can drop in the coal and switch on my system might help. There we go. So the coal's all in there. Now the iron. I've already processed the iron, just as I already had a heap of it already made up, so I may as well use it again. Switch on the fuel feed. We can hear the igniter going. We can see the adjustment the pressure. There's my steel. Flashes it, spits it out for me. Now we know the igniter's stopped. So the fuel has sw switched off as well. Solder and electrum are probably going to be the next two you want. Now electrum is a pretty easy one. Once again, low pressure, low temperature. Now this one does have a maximum pressure. For this one, we will need to turn down our pressure. Pressure's down to 2000. And we can see it's automatically pumping it down. It's happy with that pressure, we're good. Now I'll need to for my furnace it will automatically eject the silver as soon as it's melted so I'm going to have to use the override to shut it off. The automation is now gone. Put in my gold and my silver. It's melting this. It's got an ingot. It would normally spit that out but I've switched off the automation. So now that it's melting the rest I can switch it back on again. Oh, okay and it's already got it for me. That was an easy one. Now, solder has been bumped up. It is 20 megapascals. Once again, huge temperature range, low temperature, but it must be 20 megapascals or above. So this has got a lot harder to make. So we need to turn up our pressure. Now, as we do this, you might find that just melting what you need for the ingredients to make the solder might not be enough to get it to 20 20 megapascals. I'll go above it. We've got plenty of space there. So it's currently got one megapascal in there. So we're first going to have to build up a bit of pressure in there. So for that, while well, we've got some stuff there, let's just smelt something else in the meantime. 
So while we're doing that, the pressure's going up. We'll probably need a few things in there. Don't need the iron, I just need the pressure. Alright, so 50-50 of iron and lead. Listen to it raw. So we've got 30 megapascals there. This should be plenty to get it going. Once again, I'll switch off my override because I don't want it to split out straight away. both in there, that's disappeared, I can switch it back on again. There's my solder, easy. So next one up is Invar. While we've got the pressure up high we may as well have a stab at this one. Now we have a fairly tight pressure range to get to and a fairly high temperature range. So this one is iron and nickel. Switch off my override, 12 to 1500 take a stab in the middle and we want 18 to 20 so we shall decrease that and there we go so the next one up is Constantan now it is between 1000 and 1300 degrees between one, me one megapascal and 100 megapascal, so pretty much any pressure will get us there, and just the high temperature. This will spit it out straight away. We've already got the temperature and pressure we need. Pop in the nickel, pop in the copper. We'll wait until the ingots disappear. We're done. Switch him on. and our temperature is a little bit high. Now this is in Celsius so what we can do there is just open up the cool down line but our waste tank is cooling down and that will in turn cool down the furnace eventually. There we go. Right, so now we're getting into the good stuff. The super alloys. So astraloy. Astraloy between 1000 and 100,000. So any temperature above 1000 K will do it for us. 30 to 40 megapascals. We can do that. Now as before, we're going to need to build up a bit of pressure. So I'm going to refine a few more things again before we get around to the real stuff. Right, yeah. We see that the the dial has started moving there, that means that the, the equation has decided that once we get to that pressure, or well, once we get to that temperature, we'll have achieved that pressure. It's still only 20 megapascals, we'll look up to 30, but we're at 600 degrees, not at the 1300 it wants. So, one, two, three, four. Now I'll put the cobalt in first because that won't form an ingot and my automated system won't spit it out. There we go, ingredients are in there, turn on the pressure, still got fuel, let it do its thing, stand back a bit, takes a bit more to get it going, a bit more fuel, oh, there we go. Doesn't the furnace love that? Next up, zinc and tell. Now once again our temperature range is pretty easy to get, but our pressure range is very tight. So we'll probably set it to about a thousand degrees and probably 24 megapascals. And we may have to tweak this a bit to get it to work. So one part iron, one part gold, two parts nickel. And nickel. Once that disappears, I can switch the automation back on again. There we go. Oh, look at that pressure, it's almost right. Oh, we're going to get this one easy. Three, four. Oh, boom, done, straight up. Well, that one was easy. So, next up, we have Hasteloy. 
Now this one has a very tight temperature range. So 950 to 1000 or so 1000 for one K. So it's a 50 degree temperature range for that one there. And we have a five megapascal range for it there. So we might set our pressure to about the middle, our temperature to nine, we'll set a pressure to 1000 for our target and see how we go. We might have to play with the cold cool down on this one I imagine. Pressure dial up. That'll do us. So we want cobalt to silver to two nickel. Right, so all our materials are in there. Our pressure is too low, so we're going to have to give it a fire to build up some pressure. And okay, so it switches off again automatically because the safety on our automation says the temperature is already too high. You don't need any more fuel. So we're going to have to cool it down a bit. Uh, so I'll just open our cool down until it drops down below the temperature. Remember that's in Celsius. It's really uh, 1160 degrees Kelvin, which is above the thousand that we want. So. I'll just open it up to the radiator, let it cool down. Once it's cooled down, we can give it another fire. And there we go, 727. We are now in the right temperature range. I'm just way low on pressure. I should have smelted something else before putting the ingredients in there. But anyway, we're going to have to make up that pressure by burning fuel. So, turn on the fuel feed. Because we're below temperature, we'll let us switch on the fuel feed now. And away we go. on fire. Oh, boom, there we go. As it cools down, we're coming into the right pressure range, but our temperature is still too high. But still cooling down. Oh, there we go. 727 is what we're looking for here. We're still at the right pressure range. Oh, there it goes. It was a bit of a wait, but we got there. Had time to go get a coffee. Right, now that one, because it has a tight temperature range, if you have a very tight temperature range or pressure range, it is, you usually have to aim a bit higher and, and just wait for it to uh, wait for it to cool down and come into range. So next on the list, we have Stellite. Oh, she's a hot one, 1800K. Temp pressure range is pretty easy. So one silver, one silicon, two cobalt. Rock and roll. Right, 1.8 and 15. We can see our dials are moving there, releasing pressure, so we know we're pressures at the right, the right level for us. So as soon as we hit temperature, it should spit out. We have fuel, rock and roll. We might have to fire a couple of times on this one to get it up to temperature. Uh, a bit more juice, go. We got 1100. It's still feeding. Still blowing off excess pressure. Come on, go. There we go. Fired again. Spits out our ingot. Wasp alloy. This is the this is the big tamale. 50 megapascals. Now it is a low temperature, so that's not going to be an issue for us. Fairly wide temperature range, but that 50 megapascals is going to be the, the kicker on that one there. I'm going to have to do a lot of smelting before I get that one done. And here we are, still waiting for it to cool down. It's 954. Each time it drops below 50 megapascals, just drop in another chunk of copper. That'll bring your pressure back up. It'll cool it down a little bit. And I'm just going to keep on doing that and until I get it down to 800 degrees. Maybe one more. We have temperature and pressure. So I'll deactivate the override. I can feed in my ingredients. We 
still have temperature and pressure. Oops, switch our override on. And there it is. Got it. Now turn down that. <laughs> there you have it. All the alloys. So when you're making wasp alloy, I had to smelt all of this other stuff here just to get the pressure up. So while not a huge difficult one to do, you need to plan ahead. So the furnace has been revamped to take 50 megapascals, but don't push your luck. I mean, it, it can supposed to be able to handle 100 megapascals. It says there is. Patch notes do say there's a probable failure after 50 though, so there's a chance it will still explode. And um, yeah, I, 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 how did it all go? Well, I can confirm that. Um, yeah, it didn't go perfectly. But yeah, that's it. That's why we have a health and safety. Uh, that's why you don't build your furnace inside your base. The first rule of building a furnace, don't build it inside your base. Build it away from your base. And the second rule of building your furnaces is build it further away from your base than that. That's not far enough. Keep going. Well, I ignore that advice, but anyway, whatever works for you. Till next time. I got plenty of materials to build with. Happy building. See ya.